Thank you so much. It's great to be here, Pastor. It's great to be here, church. You know what? I say it everywhere I go. I say it every time I get to preach. It doesn't matter to me where it's at. It doesn't matter to me who's asked me. It doesn't matter to me what organization you want to say you're from or who you are or whatever it is. I consider it the most greatest honorable privilege that I have in my life to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of people say that, but I tell you what, I truly respect it. I work hard for the things I do for the kingdom of heaven. I don't do them for myself. I don't ask for anything in return for myself. I just ask that one more time I get to preach. One more time I get a phone call. Evangelist, come preach for us. One more time I get a letter uh, in the mail. One more time I get an, an offer over the internet or I get something on the website. It doesn't matter to me what languages it's in. I just get to preach Jesus. And you know what? God has blessed me tremendously for that church. God has blessed me so much. Sometimes I can't even think straight. Sure, I go through my valleys and my trials and my high times and my low times. But it seems like the more I give God, the more... He just reaches out and he touches me. So I'm, again, I, I, I say thank you for letting me bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you tonight. You know what? And it doesn't matter to me is, is these messages that I get to preach. They go all over the world in eight different countries and, and all over the United States and just about every state I believe now I'm in that somebody's hearing it whenever I post it. And, and sometimes they're behind. They're not always on time. It takes a lot of effort on, on people that you don't see and people that you probably never even hear their names or whatever. They all do that for us. But you know what? I thank God that people take the time to 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 go on the internet or go on Facebook or go on Twitter or go on whatever it's on nowadays. I don't even keep track of it half the time. They 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 go on the app and they're listening to the the, the, the preaching they're reaching they're listening to Willie Small singing they're, they're, they're listening to whoever's on there you know what I don't get time to promote it the way I want to but that's all going to change here shortly I hope I'll get more time to promote everything that we do at Rock Solid we do a lot we feed the hungry we give to the poor we have a, a sponsorship in Africa we have churches in Mexico we have churches in Peru we do a lot of things and you know what church I'm just honored and thankful for that And but most of all more than any of that if you took any of that stuff away from me i thank god that i get to preach the gospel of jesus christ and you know what i thank god for that do something for me i do it every time i get to preach stand up with me tonight stand up with me tonight put your hands up i don't like going into a church that's just sitting down you guys have shouted and danced all over the place but stand up with me you guys have praised god if you've been in church if you're listening to me stand up where you're at get up out your easy chair put your donut down put your twinkie down set down your glass of milk milk your cup of coffee. Huh? If you're in the car, turn the radio off and lift your hands up. Uh, it, let go of the steering wheel. Y'all all sing that song, Jesus, take the wheel. Let's put him to work. Put him, take the wheel. Huh? Stand up with me and anoint yourself. Let's say, Lord, I pray down your anointing on me. Huh? Say, Lord, tonight huh? I look up to you as you look down to us, but don't look down to us. Come and be a part of us. Uh, come and sit down here. Brother Evangelist Steve, why you do that? Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people, and I promise you this if you're going through a trial if you're going through a valley if you get off in that secret dark place uh, maybe you just got to shut your eyes at work uh, maybe you got to shut your eyes in the cab of a truck uh, but if you'll just get in that place and you'll start calling out the name of Jesus uh, the Bible teaches me that he inhabits the praises of his people that means to come down uh, to come down out of heaven to sit with us walk with us talk with us be with us uh, you know what I want you to do I want you to take the next five seconds uh, and say Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I call you into my life. Lord, I call you into this service. Lord, I ask you to do for me what nobody else can do. Uh, I want you to take those five seconds. uh Listen to me. I was on whatever it was, Facebook or Instagram or something like that the other day, and and, and, and and something caught my eye. And I love it when I know it's the Lord that catches my eye. I love it when I know that feeling and I get it instantly. If you know me and you spend time with me, you'll almost see me stop dead in my tracks or I get what I call a thousand-yard stare. I can't think of anything else because God has drawn my attention to something. But I saw a story, and she's a lifelong friend. I can remember. 
remember her family when I was just a little kid in Minkwadel, Delaware at the Assemblies of God. I can remember being at their house riding the go-karts. I can remember spending the night with her younger brother, little Frank. I can remember all of that, but she put something on, 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 on the rock solid page. I think she put it on it and she gave a little testimony, but inside that testimony, church, listen to me, inside of that testimony, I saw what God wanted me to see. I heard the question that God wanted me to hear. I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost as I sat and I read that testimony wherever I was. I wasn't at home. I don't even think I was at work, but I don't know where I was. I got so caught up into the words that Jesus was showing me. But you know what they said? They went on there and they said, I've had a good life. Listen to the words that I can't repeat it word for word, verbatim, verbatim, but I'm going to do a good job of it. But you know what that person said? The, the story just inspired me. Have you ever had a lifelong friend or a family member huh, who has been through so much, but yet through all of that, they just hold on. Huh? And it's more than just her. I can count off hundreds of names. Uh, I can tell you stories of my mom's lifelong per perseverance for the Lord. Huh? I can tell you stories of my dad from here to Texas and all the way back preaching the gospel. Huh? I can tell you stories of people I've met over my life that never gave in, never surrendered. Huh? But on that day, I picked up the phone and, and, and the notification went off. And it was those words that I saw. She went on, on there and she said, you know what? I got a lot to be thankful for, for holding on to Jesus. She said, I went to the doctor one time for just a relative appointment and they had to do open heart surgery. And you know what? Through that open heart surgery, as if, as if that wasn't enough, they found the tumor the size of a baseball and they said it was bone cancer and she went on and that 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 post or whatever you want to call it that she put up she said the cancer they found was the size of a baseball and one day that she'd wind up in a wheelchair and she'd never walk again and if that wasn't enough one of her granddaughters developed cancer and and, and they said there was no hope for her and if that wasn't enough another one of her grandsons they just fell sick one day and wound up in AI DuPont hospital where they couldn't even tell them what was wrong and I don't even know if they know to this day what was wrong with that little child uh, but I didn't tell you this uh, I didn't say she's in a wheelchair I didn't say her heart quit working I didn't say that little granddaughter ain't alive I didn't say that little grandson's not alive I didn't say any of that uh, all I said was what the doctors had told her and her family but I got news for you today because that woman ain't never stopped praying because that woman ain't never stopped calling out the name of Jesus uh, because that woman ain't never quit believing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, and what he done for her dad and her mom and her aunts and her uncles. Uh, what he done for Peter, James, John, and Paul. Uh, what he done all through the, our lives uh, he can do for her. Uh, she never one time said, my heart's going to quit beating. Uh, she never one time said, I'm going to wind up stuck in a hover round wheelchair. Uh, she never one time said, my little granddaughter uh, is going to have cancer for the rest of her life uh, she never <coughs> She never one time said that the, the, this, this, this grandson of mine is never going to do anything other than just lay here and die. No, she got off in a corner. She got somewhere. She got preachers on the phone. She got teachers on the phone. She got her brother Willie on the phone. She got her mom on the phone. She got her pastor on the phone. And when she got them all on the phone, she said, I ain't listening to what man's got to say. Jesus said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God be for me, who can be against me? And by his stripes we are healed. And there's no greater God than the God that I serve. And he came to give me life and life more abundantly. And I'm here to tell you today, Mabel ain't in no wheelchair. Mabel's granddaughter is alive and well. Mabel ain't got no pacemaker, no nothing in her. She's had her surgery and she's healed. And little baby Joseph, who if you'd have seen him, you'd thought he 
he was dead for no reason. He's alive, walking, talking, kicking, playing, running, screaming. And he's being raised in a house that knows who saved him, that knows who healed him, who knows who gave him life and life more abundantly. I've known him all my life. And I'm telling you, I know the one thing that saved Mabel, that saved baby Mabel, that saved little Joseph. And it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It was a family bonded together in one thing. It was a family doing the same thing in unison and consistency. It was a family calling out to Jesus. They were reaching up no matter how high the storm got, no matter how bad the waves got. They were reaching up. They were reaching up. They were reaching up. They were reaching up. And they were saying, Lord, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm not going backwards. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. Take my life. I'm not going to give up. I see you coming, Lord, and I'm holding on. I'm not giving honor to Brother Willie. I'm not giving honor to anybody. I normally don't say any names. I just say the, the, the words that I spoke. But I keep hearing him playing his day. Listen to me closely, church. That family bonded together. And they did one thing. They did exactly what I'm going to ask you tonight. Are you holding on? Don't give up. Too many people stand on the brink of a miracle. God's about to burst upon the scene. And they turn their back and they walk away because they say, I can't do it. They say the doctor said. They say the the politician said they say the school said I don't care what any of them say I say what Jesus said and Jesus said thou art healed go forth you ain't broken poor you're rich and mighty you ain't dumb ignorant and stupid you're smarter than anybody that's my question you to you tonight is are you holding on you ain't holding on if you're listening to every negative thing around you you know what I'd have turned loose and ran a long time ago if I had time to worry about what somebody thought of me Make no mistake in my voice. Make no mistake in looking at me tonight. I'm telling you right now, I would have quit a long time ago if I worried about somebody. If I worried about those that like me and those that don't like me, I oftentimes say it. I got more members of the Hate Steve Bush Club than I got more members of the Love the Evangelist Steve Bush Club. But you know what? I ain't got no time for if you like me, don't like me, think you're big enough to pick me up and throw me out the back door. I only got time to do one thing and that's hold on to the hand of Jesus and do that which he has told me to do you see that whole family they got together and they called forth they called forth they called forth they called forth every healing they need and they're still doing it no matter what comes in their lives they're still doing it today are you holding on listen to me if you got your Bibles Flip over with me real quick to Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 24th verse. Listen to me closely. There's times in all of our lives when we want to quit. Every day I think I go through it. Every day I wake up uh, and I got to go to work or my son Jacob's just driving me nuts with his schoolwork. Uh, he won't do this or he won't do that, but he wants this and he wants that and he wants this and he knows uh, I love him dearly and he pretty much gets anything he asks me for, but he drives me nuts at times and it's in those times that I got to really reach down and say, God, uh, I love you. Uh, I love you. I know this kid's driving me nuts, uh, but I love you. He kill me if he knew I was preaching about him tonight but that's all right listen to me all of us go through those times all of us go through those times don't let nobody walk in the church door and act to you like they don't have no problems every one of us has got problems sister you got problems brother you got problems pastor you even got problems uh, but you know what the difference is uh, is we don't dwell on the problems we don't get caught up in the problems we don't sit with the problems uh, listen to me closely uh, know this right now uh, Jesus knows exactly where you're at he knows exactly what you're going through nothing has ever happened to you that Jesus himself did not know about period Matthew the 14th chapter the 29th verse listen to me sorry I'm getting ahead of myself the 27th verse but Jesus said immediately said to them take courage it is I do not 
be afraid. Listen to me. Like I told you when I opened up, when the pastor told me to come up, it don't matter where you're at. It don't matter where you're doing. Write that down, part number one. Take courage of where you're at. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Listen to me closely. If you study the Bible, you know that that was in the fourth watch. Jesus in the verses prior told him, get in the boat and go to the other side. I'll dismiss this crowd and I'll come to you when I'm done. He didn't tell him how he was going to get there. He didn't tell him he was going to walk on the water. He didn't tell him anything. But watch what those 12 men did. They didn't sit amongst themselves and say, my God, what is he crazy? We got to make arrangements for him to get over there. No. They got in the boat. They dropped the anchor. They pulled the anchor in and they cast off. Are you cast off? That's another question for you. Are you cast off? You can't cast off if you're worried about where the other person is. None of those 12 men, James, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Peter, all of them, none of them cared where Jesus was. They cared that Jesus had told them, get in that boat and go to the other side. If you study it, you know it was in the fourth watch. And if you know the fourth watch, that's right before the dawn. That's the longest, darkest part of the night. That's when anything that's bad's going to happen is going to happen. They say that every home that's broke into at night is broke into right before it gets daylight. Why? You're either asleep or they know you ain't home. Listen to me. It was in the fourth watch that the storm began to blow. It was in the fourth watch that the waves got up over top the boat. It was in the fourth watch that everything seemed that it was going wrong. Where are you at? You might be in the fourth watch. The doctor might have walked into the room and said, your heart ain't beating right no more. We got to take it out and do this and do that to it. Whatever they do in them surgeries. And it might be the fourth watch when the doctor walks in and says, you know what? You got cancer the size of a baseball in you and it's down in your bones and you're going to wind up in a wheelchair and you ain't going to walk no more. Oh, but listen to me, church. They might tell you, your kids, there's no hope for them. They're not going to have an education. They might tell you one thing or another, but I want you to look at your neighbor. It might be the fourth watch. It might be the darkest you think it's ever been in your life, but hold on, my child. Why? Because joy comes in the morning. Jesus is coming in the morning. When the sun comes up, the sun's coming in. The S-U-N's coming up, but the S-O-N is coming in. And when Jesus walks in, it don't matter how dark it's been. It don't matter how long and hot the night has been. Joy, 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 joy comes in the morning. Listen to me closely. You don't get no joy when you're worried about what everybody's saying. If God told you to put something on Facebook, brothers and sisters, uh, put it on Facebook and know that God told you uh, and he'll bless you for it. Uh, if God's told you to do something in the ministry from shaking the hands at the back door uh, to running the church at the front door, uh, it don't matter. Just do it. Uh, if God's told you to start a church, uh, by God, go out and find the financing or find the people to stand with you. Uh, but make sure it's God that's told you. Uh, just as the disciples knew, uh, Jesus said, get in the boat and go to the other side listen to me closely they got in the boat and they got out the, the, the bible clearly says a good distance they might have been in the middle they might have been far enough that they couldn't turn back remember they didn't have no engines in them days all they had was the wind now i want you to see something else peter was a fisherman he knew his way around the boat he knew exactly what to do if the wind blew too hard on that boat he knew exactly what to say to the men to do throw this over here put this sail up there you know what you find you find peter was steadfast it don't say he got scared. It don't say he told them all, let's jump off. No, he stood fast in that which Jesus had told him to do. He said, go to the other side. Peter stood in that boat, and I can see him now. Can't you, church? He's saying, you do this, and you do that, and you do this. But if you read that story closely, they were scared. 
go to the doctor and they say, you got this, that, and the other wrong with you. They'll say, do this and do that and do this. And you might stand a chance of surviving. When you bring your problems to Jesus, he says, do this, do this, do this. So what do you mean evangelist? What is he saying to do? He said, for God so loved the world that, who forever, that whoever gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It don't matter what the doctor said. If you believe in Jesus, you got everlasting life eternal. He tells you exactly what to do, and you do it. And just like that young lady, you'll stand firm in it, and you won't wind up in no wheelchair. You'll stand firm in it. Your brothers will stand firm in it. Your little sister will stand firm in it. And guess what? Jesus will tell you exactly what to do, and you're holding on to him, and he'll look down at you, and he'll say, take courage. Church don't take courage no more. They want to grab hold to the next big thing. Uh-uh, don't get quiet on me now. Uh-uh, don't say, uh-oh, here he goes. You're doggone right, here I go. We don't do that no more. I call it Bible basics. I look at people all the time that come to me, and they say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. I say, well, bless God, I'll pray with you, but do something for me. Step back and say, Jesus, am I doing everything right? Those that know me closest, those that know me, that walk beside me, my son, and my daughter, they'll tell you when my dad's got a problem, he'll get real quiet. He'll lock himself away somewhere. Why? Because I'm dedicating. I'm devoting. I'm meditating. I'm deliberating on what Jesus wants me to do. And make no mistake, when he's moved on me, I take courage in what he's told me. I can't fail. I can't fall. Why? Because Jesus has told me to do it. And I'm going to do it. Jesus has told me to say it. And I'm going to say it. And therefore, if he's told me to do it and say it and be it, you ain't going to stop me. You might think you can stand there and stop me. But I don't even have to move my hand because Jesus is with me. Listen to me. He said, take courage. It is I. Who's the I? You've heard me say it. You've heard me say it. Most of you know me. You know me. I always say it. It's I that's coming. Take the I out and put a J-E-S-U-S. It's Jesus coming. You know it's Jesus coming. We all say it. We all hear it. We all say it. We all hear it. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We'll literally put that into your life. Evangelist, the doctor told me I got cancer and I got six months. So what? It is I. He's standing there. Pastor, it's dark. It's real dark, Pastor. I don't know if I'm going to have the money to keep the website up and running next month. I don't know if I'm going to have the money to keep the Facebook promotions up next month. Guess what? Jesus is standing there. I ain't got to worry about it. Jesus is coming. It is I. Take courage. Listen to me. Listen to me closely. What Peter did. Peter ain't no different from most of us. A lot of us think we're this and that. But I tell you what, I don't know how it would feel for a doctor to walk into a hospital room and look at me and say, Brother Steve, you got six months to live, so it's easy for me to stand here and tell you what I would do. But I know my hope is eternal, and I would like to think that I would profess Jesus on that day. I don't oftentimes say it, but I remember when they moved my father in Tampa General from just a normal hospital room up to the ICU. Him and I were, were 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 laughing, and I said, "I said, Dad, you want me to pray for me? Pray for you?" They say your voice is, you, you, your breathing's getting shallow, and he said, "Of course, I want you to pray for me, son." And you know what? They come in with this machine, uh, and 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 Pastor, they put it on his, they put it on his face, and he tore it off, and he said, "I can't talk with my family with that on." Huh? And you know what? Uh, the last scripture I got to quote with my dad was John three sixteen, and we quoted it. Uh, but everybody in that room, uh, every part of my family, grab hands. 
revenge. Listen to what my father did. He said, pray for me. And we began to pray. See, it don't matter to me that on 2 14, 14, God called him home. It mattered to me that on that day, God spoke to him and said, pray for me. And we held hands and we prayed. You know what? Give me a hundred men that can do that. Give me a hundred women that can do that. Laying in a hospital bed about to lose their leg. I'll give you a hundred warriors and I'll run the devil clean out of America. I'll get a hundred women like that and there won't be no more sin left in this town. I don't know what it would feel like to be told I got bone cancer and I'm going to wind up uh, in, a, in a wheelchair. But I guarantee you this, uh, until the day they strap me down in that wheelchair, uh, Jesus said, you got today. Uh, don't look at yesterday. Uh, don't look at tomorrow. What do you mean, evangelist? Uh, woo! Uh, today I can shout. Uh, today I can dance. Uh, today I can speak in tongues. Uh, today I can call forth those things that be not as though they were. Uh, I don't care what they said yesterday. I'm not worried about what they say tomorrow. I'm holding on to the unchanging hand of Jesus Christ today. Look at somebody and say, get you some of that. I'm going to hold on no matter what, just for today. And if God lets me wake up in the morning, and he lets me go to work, and he lets me walk, and he lets me talk, I'm going to do exactly that which I said I was going to do. I'm going to call forth one more time. I'm going to dance one more more time I'm gonna preach one more time verse 29 <laughs> he said then Peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus verse 30 but when he saw the wind Listen to me. I say this quite often. You remember when you got saved. You remember when God tugged at your heart. You remember when you had nowhere else to turn and sin had run your life rampant. When you were all dirty and nasty and you know you needed somebody other than that was in this world. Whether it had been your wife, your husband, your brother, your grandmother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle. You needed somebody. And Jesus was that person standing there. And he tugged on you and you ran right into the altar and you got saved. You remember that day, boy, you stood up. You were six foot tall bulletproof uh, and ready to fight every devil that came at you uh, listen to me uh, here's Peter he's on the boat uh, he's telling everybody don't worry don't get scared watch this I'm fitting to step out uh, he stepped out and he started walking uh, you step out these doors tonight you're going to start walking uh, but look what that verse said uh, he said he saw the wind uh, and he became afraid uh, stop looking at what the devil wants you to look at uh, stop seeing what the devil wants you to see what do you mean of your family falling apart don't see it your health going down the tubes don't see it it don't matter what he wants you to see what the other people are saying about you and most of those people listen to me closely they're right here they're right here they won't nobody judge you faster than a Christian you know what I had the opportunity the other day at work to look at a young man and tell him don't look at me like that look at me for what I can do not what I say I do but what I can do you know what? The church will judge you faster than any sinner walking today. Don't look at it. Don't see it. The verse said, Peter said he saw the wind. Listen to me. The devil's going to blow. He's going to howl. He's going to try to knock you off your course and beat you down. Stop listening to it. You know what you do? You close your eyes as I told you before. You get your head wrapped around Jesus and you say, Lord, I'm holding on. Go through this life and 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 it's like you see them in church and they're shouting and they're dancing and then three weeks later they ain't there no more. Why? Because the wind come along and blow them off uh, and they didn't have that firm foundation that they were built upon. That they started out on. See, you can't get no firmer than Jesus. Get Jesus down in your soul. Grab hold of that hand uh, and read the, listen to me. I'm going to give it to you. My five golden keys uh, of not letting the devil blow you off course. A, read your Bible. Why? David said, I hide my word in your heart so that you may not sin against me. 
me. Jesus told the devil after 30 days in the wilderness, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. B, go to church. Win. Every time the doors open. Why? Because the word of God you should have been reading says, forsake you not the assemblies together of yourself. Uh, two, three, I mean, uh, pay your tithes. Why? Because you will not quit that which you are invested in. Uh, what do you mean, evangelist? You pay your tithes. You want to see the church grow. Uh, you pay your tithes. You want to see people saved. Uh, you pay your tithes. You want to see the hungry fed. Uh, you want to see the missions. Uh, you know what? Listen to this. Uh, number four, uh, testify who you are. Uh, my God, can we testify? Uh, can we tell somebody what God's done for us? Uh, why? Uh, because you won't turn your back on that which you witness. Uh, you won't walk away from that which you witness. Uh, you won't stand uh, and run from that which you witness. Uh, and number five, uh, number five, uh, number five, uh, the hardest one of all, uh, just hold on uh, when there's nothing left to hold on to. Uh, hold on to Jesus uh, when you ain't got no money. Uh, hold on to what you know that 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 you know. Remember when you came to Jesus, you were so big and bad. You thought everything was going to be all right. I told somebody the other day, that's the feeling. A lot of people ask me how I do it when things are driving me crazy, when I'm worried about everybody and everyone. I flip that switch that reminds me exactly of who God chose, of who God called, of who God separated, and he loved me so much. I don't much care what they think of me. I don't much care what they say of me. I don't much care, much care, much care, much care. I'm serving God and I'm holding on. Hey, let me explain something to you. The wind blows, and I'm almost done. Listen to me clearly. The wind blows. That's the devil blowing. But make no mistake, Jesus controls the wind. I used to sing a song that ain't no man like Jesus. He controls the wind and rain. <laughs> Listen to what it says. Remember, period, plain and simple. It said, then Peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. He began to sink. See, listen to me. That young lady walked into the doctor's office and they said, you need open heart surgery. She walked into the doctor's office and they said, you got cancer. You're going to wind up in the wheelchair. She walked into the doctor's office and said, your infant granddaughter, she's got cancer. She walked into the doctor's offices and she said, the doctor said to her, we don't know what's wrong with Bates Joseph, but, but, but he might, might probably will. He might die. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> he, she was scared. <laughs> Anything was going to go wrong. She thought it could go wrong. <laughs> but listen to what she did, what Peter did, what everybody's done that ever got an answer for God, it said, period, plain and simple, Lord, save me. When you cry out to God with your voice, when you say, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, you're reaching up. You're looking over top the wave that's coming at you. You're seeing through the wind that's blowing at you. All that don't matter. All that don't care. You got one place left to turn, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. It don't matter how many books of the Bible. Bible you can quote. It don't matter how many verses of the books of the Bible that you can quote. It don't matter any of that. If you can't call out on the one name, the, the, the only name that can save you, you ain't done nothing about nothing about nothing. It's time America. It's time this world. We stop calling out to Donald Trump. We stop calling out to Obama. We stop going to the first national church of the pity party. And we start doing exactly what Peter did when he was sinking. You notice it didn't say he drowned it. Uh, you notice it didn't say he wasn't going to make it. Uh, it said he cried out. Uh, you read the next verse. Uh, and it said Jesus reached down. Uh, let me tell you something. You ain't reached up. Uh, Jesus reached down. Uh, let me tell you something. You, when you cry out. Uh, it <coughs> 
When you cry out, uh, he'll reach down to you. Uh, he'll reach down to you. Uh, he'll reach down to you. Uh, I don't care where you're at. Uh, I don't care where you're going. Uh, I don't care what you're doing. Uh, I don't care what they said about you. Uh, if God called you to sing, uh, get a microphone, a guitar, a piano, an organ, a set of drums and sing. Uh, if God's called you to preach, uh, you know what? Uh, go get you a, a microphone uh, and get you a tape recorder and pop the tape in and preach. If you ain't doing nothing but preaching to yourself. Uh, if God's told you to go on the corner uh, and just tell everybody you love them and so does Jesus uh, go find you the worst corner of the state to stand in uh, and tell everybody that you love them don't get consumed in what the devil's trying to do don't get consumed in what he's trying to take from you because he can't take nothing unless we let him. And when you're holding on, he ain't going to take nothing. Make no mistake in my voice. He might take it. Make no mistake as you look at me. He might take it. But my Bible plainly tells me he'll give you back more than the devil took from you. And I never give nothing up in my life that God hasn't given me back a hundred, a thousand, a million fold. I got more to be thankful for today for letting go yesterday than I had yesterday for holding on to. Listen to me as you're standing there. Look at somebody. Look at somebody. I'm done. Listen to me. Look at somebody. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your brother. Turn to your aunt. Turn to your uncle and say no matter what, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm never giving up. I'm never turning back. Yeah, I can sing. What's me sing. Yeah, I can preach. Listen to me preach. Yeah, I can testify. Watch me testify. If you don't like it, get away from me. Get thee behind me, Satan, for I will not serve thee. I'm going to serve God. Isn't it time? Isn't it time? Oh, Lord, I could keep right on going. Make no mistake. I could keep right on going. Don't get caught up in everything that goes on around you. That's the wind blowing. That's the waves wanting to overtake you. Uh, don't do it. Uh, don't do it. Uh, don't do it. Uh, when you start to go under and you start to give in and you start to be uh, like everybody else, uh, you know what you do? Uh, you look out above that, that wave. Uh, you look over that rainstorm uh, and you say, <laughs> there's Jesus. Uh, he's coming for me. Uh, he told me exactly what he wanted in my life. Make no mistake, I know what God wants for me. I know what he's told me to do and what he would do for me. And when I feel the pressures of a ministry, when I feel the pressures of being in a company, make no mistake of running a company, make no mistake, I know exactly what I'm doing. And it's in the moment, my big old six foot one hand, as big as I am, looks up to Jesus. And I say, Lord, I can't walk. I can't talk. I can't do no more. Show me exactly what you want me to do. And when he does it, and he shows me, and he tells me, <laughs> my back becomes straight, my shoulders become square. Why? Because I know I'm not holding on to just somebody's hand. I'm holding on to the king of the king, the lord of the lords, the savior of all saviors. And he's holding on to my hand. I want you to turn to your neighbor, your sister, your brother, your aunt and uncle. And I want you to say it one more time with me before I turn this mic back over. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. If you're listening to me on the internet, if you're listening to me on Facebook and there's nobody else in that house or your husband's there or your grandson's there or whatever, I don't care where you're at. If you're in Louisiana, if you're here in California, if you're in New York, if you're in Texas, if you're in Jonesboro, Arkansas, if you're in Guyana and Africa, look up to heaven and say, God, 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 I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I want to know tonight, are you holding on? God bless you is my prayer.